Well, good morning. It's good to see you all again. Uh, I know that we don't have class this Wednesday. It's National If Pets Had Thumbs Day. Uh, so we won't have our live stream where we've got a problem session. But I thought it would still be wise to give you some problem sets uh, that I work through from the sections 2.3, 2.6, and 2.7. The homework, which is due on the 8th, um, that would be beneficial for the homework, which is due on the 8th. Uh, and there's a quiz on that next Friday. This Friday we've got that quiz on 1.11, 2.1, and 2.2. Um, so I'm just going to go through a bunch of problems. <clears throat> and uh, this video is going to be all about some problems from section 2.3. There will be separate videos for sections 2.6 and 2.7. So let's go ahead and get started on that. The first problem is problem 6. And it's, it's got lots of parts. The first set says solve 2x plus 1 equals negative x plus 4 graphically. The second part is to solve the inequality instead of the equality graphically as well. So uh, I'm going to go through both of these in one graph and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So we remember that for any of these problems, we treat the left hand side like it's its own function. So I'll graph this left side in red first. Six. And we need to remember that our solution, graphically, is going to be just as good as our graph is. So I'm going to try and graph this as well as I can. Um, so first, f. Now that's a line that has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 2. So I'll go up 2 for every 1 I go over. And then I will do the same thing in the other direction. And I'll try my best to connect those dots. So this is our left side, f. Um, our right side, I'll graph in another color maybe blue here, we'll call that one g. This is negative x plus 4, so it's got a y-intercept of 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. That's one of the points we know. And then it's got a slope of negative 1, so it goes down 1 for every 1 that it goes over to the right. So this is the point 1, 3, so it does hit that one. So this is where the graph clearly is not lining up. There we go. We'll, we'll cheat. graph looks a little bit like this. So now the question to be answered is, where are they equal? Well, that's right here. They're equal right at that intersection point. So what is the x value there? We just drop that line straight down. It's the value 1. So when x equals 1, graphs are equal. And we could check that algebraically if we wanted to. Adding the x to the left side, subtracting the 1 to the right side, dividing by 3, x is 1 as our solution. So the graphical solution here agrees with the algebraic. The latter I trust more, but there you go. So now how about this inequality? So this inequality, part B, is just asking for, for all the x values for which the red graph is lower or less than the blue graph. So I can highlight that. It's this part of the graph, right, forever and for always down there. Because the blue graph goes up and to the left, where they intersect is the point where the red graph is forever going to be underneath the blue graph. So that's the part of the graph that we're looking at. Now what are the x values for that? Well, it again boils down to that intersection point 1. So we've got at 1 they're exactly equal. So we can't include 1, so I'll draw a circle around it. But anything less than 1, if we plug it in to both those equations, f and g, 
anything less than 1 will give us the, a true inequality because the red graph is lower than the blue graph. So part B has the solution negative infinity to 1 as an interval. Any x in that interval will provide us with the true inequality here. Okay, so just to scroll up there for a second for him. Okay, so that's the first question. Question six is just graphing two lines, checking inequality and checking an inequality. The next problem is A, find from the graph a bunch of different values. So we've got g of negative 4, g of negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. So we're looking for the output of the function at specific inputs, and those inputs are negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. So here's the graph, copied straight out of the text as best I can. This is problem 8. So let's start with g of negative 4. The input is negative 4, so here's 1, 2, 3, Here's negative 4. So what is the value of g at that? Well, it's 1, 2, 3. That is g of negative 4. How about g of negative 2? So 1, 2. Here's g of negative 2. What is g's value at that? Close to 2. I'm going to estimate it and say it is 2. So I'll just round that off. g of 0. So I don't go left or right at all, and I look at the output, the height, right there. g of 0 is down there. So that looks like a height of negative 2. g of 2. 1, 2. Looks like we're at a height of 1. G of 4. That's what's, that's what's right there hiding behind the screen. G of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's at a height of 0. So we've got our table. From the graph, we found all those outputs given the specific inputs. The next part is what is the domain and what is the range of G? I'll start with domain. Domain. Oops. Well, we're just going to have to leave that. Domain. Um, maybe I can do this. Here we go. Domain has to deal with the x values that we're plugging in. What are all of the allowed x values? Well, here. kind of explicitly written out for us. Um, it looks like the graph has an output for any value from negative 4 over to positive 4. I've highlighted them there. Right? There's heights associated with anything in between these two points and there's values at those points. The one questionable spot is right here at 2, but it looks like we've got a height assigned at 1, right here at 1. It's, it's not defined to be up here, it's defined to be down here at that point. So there is, there are outputs for every single input in the interval, negative 4 to positive 4. So that's the domain. So let's do domain g is negative 4 to 4, the interval, negative 4 to 4. And how about the range? So what are the possible outputs? Well, it looks like we could get a height as low as negative 2 and we can get a height as high as 3. 
It looks like it doesn't skip any heights in between there. It, it hits every single height in between there. So we have our range, which is now the pink shaded region of the y-axis. It's any value between negative 2 and 3. So I'll write it again as a an interval. This one is, is in the x-axis. This one is on the y-axis. So it's all, all the possible heights that we could get. Part C, for what values of x is g of x equal to 3? So we, we've actually we've taken a point out of our range, this end point of our range, and we're asked what are all the inputs which give us that. So here we go. This graph's getting crowded, but here is the height of 3. So for what inputs do we get that height out? We already found one earlier. It's right here. When we plug in negative 4, we got a height of 3. So we've got a number for our list. Let's go ahead and write it down. At x equal to negative 4. Okay, are there any others? Well, we, we might like to try and guess right here at 2, but we need to remember that this is a, an open circle. So g, is, g does not take that value. As you approach from the right hand side here, it does get closer and closer to that height, but it never gets to that height. When you get to the value of 2 for x equal to 2, the function jumps down here and it, it never takes that height of 3, it just drops down just right away. So you can get as close as you want to the height of 3, but you'll never reach that height of 3 at x equals 2. So this is our list. It's just at x equals negative 4. D, estimate the values for which g of x is less than or equal to 0. So it says estimate. Um, Okay. This graph is really getting messy. So where are these values where our graph is below 0? Uh, where is it negative? So I'll highlight it here. Looks like our graph is negative here. This is where the graph is below the x-axis. And then there's the points where it is 0, it's 0 there, it's 0 here, and it looks like it's 0 here too. So where is our graph less than or equal to 0 in terms of the x coordinates? It looks like from here, negative 1, to here, which is just less than 2, so I'm going to call it 1.9, and then it is 0 here at 4. So it's negative from here to here on the x-axis, and it's 0 at the endpoints, and it's 0 at 4 as well. So negative 1 to 1.9, it's negative in between there, and it's 0 at the edges, at the boundaries, and it's 0 at x equals 4. So these are the values for x, which make that graph less than or equal to 0. Next, E, find the net change for, uh, for g between x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. So we just need to do this. We need to find g of 2 and subtract g of negative 1. This is how net change is defined. You take the bigger of the x values, you plug it in. You subtract from that what you get when you plug in the smaller of the x values. So it's final minus initial. So 2 and negative 1 is what we're plugging in. So g of 2, do we find that one earlier? It's right here. So that's 1. g of 2 is 1. 
g of negative 1. I don't, did not see that one. We didn't plug that one in. So at negative 1, what do we have here? Well, at negative 1, you can see it's right on the x-axis. So we've got a height of 0. So at negative 1, we're right there. We're right on the axis. So we're at the height of 0. So what's that net change? It's 1. So you can sort of visualize that on the graph. Here's g of 2. Here's g of negative 1. The graph rises a total of 1 units from there to there. So that's the net change. Okay, And that is this problem. That is the entirety of it, problem 8. It's a rather long problem, asks quite a lot of questions, but that makes it a good problem, I think. So the next one is number 13, sketch f of x equals x minus 2 for negative 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 5 and state its domain and range. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch it. Sounds like my son woke up from his nap. All right, so we're only we're only graphing from negative two to five on the x-axis. So so we really only need to graph from here over to here. So we're not going to have anything over here or anything over here. Okay, so that's the first thing to note which means our domain is going to be a subset of that interval from negative 2 to 5. It could be the whole interval, but it might just be a subset of it. Our equation is x minus 2 for the function, so our, our expression is x minus 2. So that means it has an x-intercept, sorry, y-intercept of negative, uh, sorry, of, wow, what am I doing, of 2, of 2, Okay. Uh, excuse me, of negative 2. What am I thinking? I was thinking x I said x intercept and I was thinking about x intercept. But I was looking at the y intercept. <laughs> I was getting confused. It has a y intercept of negative 2. And I notice when we plug in 2, we get 0. So that means it has an x intercept of 2. And that gives us our two points for graphing. This is a line. I wanted to be really particular about all of this. I think that I would really compute what happens when we plug in 5. We get 3. So 1, 2, 3. This is 5, comma 3. And then if we plug in negative 2, we get negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe this lines up. Oh, it does. So this is negative 2, negative 4. Okay, and it's solid throughout. So what is our domain? The domain is all those allowed x values. So we, looks like we can plug in anything between negative 2 and 5. And we can include 5. And we can include negative 2. So the domain of f is the interval negative 2 to 5. And how about the range? So the range is all those allowed y values. So we see a maximum value over here on the far right at a height of 3. And we see a minimum value here on the left of negative 4 and we can include those values because the line takes those values so our range in blue here is those allowed heights so we've got negative 4 up to 3 okay so that is the domain and that is the range of this function now I only graphed for these inputs because it told me that 
Right? That's all I could graph. And there's a relationship here for the domain of this thing and what we're allowed to plug in, right? In fact, here it's the exact same thing. But it is possible to have a smaller set than that, especially if there's if there's a, a, a quotient or something like that, a rational function involved. That's question 13, domain and range. Um, question 34 gives you a, a crazy graph that I've sketched here poorly, but I've sketched it. And it's asking what is, where are the intervals where f is increasing, where are the intervals where f is decreasing, and then it says to label all the extreme values, so all the maxes, all the mins, call them appropriately local or global maxima or minima. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna do this over here. It's increasing, and I'm going to highlight where it's increasing. So graphically, where something is increasing when it's rising from the left to the right. So here, it's actually falling. All right, so I'm going to label it red. Increasing, looks like it's increasing here. So I'll highlight that green. And then it looks like it's falling again here to here. So it's decreasing there. So where is it increasing? In green, I've already highlighted that. It looks like it's increasing from this x value of negative 2 over to 1. Right, so it's increasing from x equal to negative 2 to 1. It's increasing all along there. You, you take any two x values in that interval, negative 2 to 1, and you check uh, the values of the function. What you're going to find is the smaller input gives you a smaller output than the larger input. Okay, so you take any two numbers from inside that interval, negative two to one, you know, this one and this one, and you check the function heights, and you're going to get a bigger thing over here and a smaller thing over here because the graph is rising on that interval. Okay, so that's where it's increasing. So where is it decreasing? <coughs> So I've highlighted the graph in red where it, it looks like it's falling. So let's look at the x values for that. Well, here we've got a big value here, and then it looks like it's decreasing over to that green endpoint. So that would be negative 3 to negative 2. Now the big question that everybody's asking is what kind of thing do I put at the end here? Do I put an open or a closed bracket? And you just need to, to basically run through what I said there at the end of last time is if I were to pick any two points within this interval that I'm discussing, um, in particular can I pick negative two and still have the smaller input gives me the bigger output. So I pick in particular two, negative two and anything else over here. Do I still have that this height is less than this height? The answer is yes, so we can include negative two. We can include that in the decreasing part because the function is falling and then jumps way, way down. Right, it's falling here and then it goes way down further, so it's still decreasing down there, and down to that point, if you will. Okay? So, there we go. Where else is it decreasing? Well, it's over here, right? Um, from 1 to 2. And it's decreasing all along that. At 1, we're way up here, so it falls down and then it keeps continuously moving down. So it's decreasing from 1 to 2. Okay. So the next part of this question is to label every single uh, extreme value. So these are the big, the maximas and the minimas 
and we're going to call them local and global and, and, and things like that. So um, I'm not going to be able to erase those. They're they're spot on. <laughs> so I'll label the the maxima here. So it looks like this point here and this point here are maxima, right? Uh, if we look in a small little neighborhood of the inputs that give us that, right? These are the biggest points in the neighborhood. The biggest, this point here is the biggest point in this little neighborhood of the specific input that gave us that. And I notice over here if I plug in this guy and then I look around nearby, you know, I get this graph that's just a little bit of a, a part, a tail that's falling off to the right, and then there's nothing to the left. So the input here gives us this maxima there. So these are both local maxima. And then there's the question of, are they global too? And the answer is yes. They're both at this height of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. As, as best as I could draw, they're both at this height. So they're both global maxima. And we could describe them, you know, f of negative 3, f of 1, equal to 6, are the global max. Okay, are there any local maxima? No. Everything here is a global. You could call them local too, they're both local as well, but they're also gl uh, global. How about local mins? Well, the smallest two points we pick out, I think, are right here and here. So we've got f of 2 and f of negative 2. For the same reasons, you look in a neighborhood, these are the smallest things in the neighborhoods. So we've got f of negative 2 and 2. Both at a height of negative 1. They're both the global minima. Nothing else is below them in the entire graph. And no matter where else we look in this graph, there's there's no other minimum locations. Everything's either a maximum, a global maximum, or everything is a global minimum in this problem. And that's it for 34. And that's it for the problems that I prepared for this section. Much of this section is just, you know, do you have the graph of your function already? If you do, great. If not, do your best to graph it. Um, so uh, do your best to graph it or use a graphing utility or, you know, just use what you're given. And you, you're just reading information from the graph. So just get good at, uh, at, at looking for these particular things. It, it boils down to knowing definitions. And, uh, and you'll, you should be good. So I hope that helps. And I'll see you next time for some problems on section 2.6. Until then.